I would like to start with Mr. Harun Sharif. Thank you, sir, for joining us. It's a pleasure. Uh, so I'll just shoot the first question. So in your view, what are the fault lines of economic security and how does the application of effective public policy and some of the different structural shifts play into it? And what is this crucial time for Pakistan has in store for us? Yes. <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you very much to the Snowboard Institute and partner institutions for inviting me here. How much time do you want me to spend? Because this can, can go for hours. It can be <laughs> squeezed in five minutes. <laughs> We'd like you to go over it in five to seven minutes or no, ten I if you like. Too little. <laughs> and then anyway, let me, let me make an attempt. <coughs> I think the fundamental question uh, which nations need to ask themselves uh, is that, you know, how do you progress and be part of you know, the global community in terms of your uh, selling your economic comparative advantage? Now that's, a, that's the fundamental question because each nation in the world is endowed with a specific comparative advantage. Okay. You have asked a specific question of fault lines. Now let me, as an economist, let me put some numbers on the table. The numbers are that when we look at 40 to 50 years of Pakistan's economic history, our average GDP growth is on a decline. Okay? It has gone up and down, but the way we calculate, so it's slightly between 3.5% to 4% over the past 40 years. Okay? In real terms, our competitiveness has gone down. Our investment to GDP ratio is also on a decline. Our debt to GDP ratio is on the rise. You know, I think some numbers are critical to keep in mind. Our per capita income in real terms is also on a decline. So what we need to now think, you know, in forums like these, that why the rest of Asia is rising, particularly on our Eastern and Southeast Asia and East Asia side, and why Pakistan has not managed to take an upward uh, direction. If we need to provide dignified opportunities to 250 million people, 70% of these people are younger people. And three million young boys and girls like, you know, the ones sitting here are coming to the labor market every year for a job or some economic opportunity. We need seven to eight percent economic growth for next 10 years. So I'm just putting the context of the first fault line that our major economic indicators are on a decline. Okay. Second thing is a mindset. So when a country is making an economic, you know, uh, uh, dealing with an economic shock, which Pakistan continues to deal with economic shocks, we have tried to look for answers through our geopolitical positioning, rather than looking at answers which are an economic value proposition. And our friends have been bailing us out as well for the shorter period. So the first fault, fault line which I see in the past 30, 35 years as a student of Pakistan and many other countries is a mindset which tries to respond to an economic problem through a geopolitical lens or a diplomacy lens rather than offering a commercially viable economic proposition the way Vietnam does or Cambodia does or Indonesia does or India does, what we do is we just reach out to our traditional partners and go for a bailout. And I have very deliberately used the word bailout because we are hearing a lot about economics these days. And practically bailout is not an economics. Bailout is basically buying you a very little space to do economics. We got to understand, we celebrate IMF tranche. That's a bailout. So we got to the first fault line is the mindset, which is 
particularly focused on bailouts. Okay? It is not focused on having an economic development strategy or a, a development, you know, progressive thinking. It is about bailouts. It's about debt. That let's take some more loans and, you know, we'll buy six more months. Now, I'm not criticizing, but that's what data tells us as the first fault line. Now, why a bailout? Because the government is always in a macroeconomic crisis. Or the macroeconomic crisis hai, usko bhi hum kehte hai ki ye economics hai. This is a very small but important part of your economic development. Kyunki the macroeconomic crisis ke mein aapko teen hisse bata deta hu. The first part of your macroeconomic crisis is that humne over the years, jaise maine pehle arz kiya, ki agar humari export gir rahi thi, to naturally log to humari population bad rahi hai, to import hi badegi na ji. So you need to import more things. I'm just trying to be very simplistic. If you are import then you need to have dollars. Chahiye. So the first macroeconomic fault line is that Pakistan does not have dollars to pay our external liabilities. So that's a fact. Take okay? it. The fault is we call technical terms in economics ke students. Hai, we call it the current account and trade deficit. Second, our fault line is our over-reliance on debt. I will give you some numbers de hon, just to clarify our mind from security. Pakistan has been declared by United Nations as a debt-stressed country. <laughs> debt-stressed countries ke under 42 countries in this world. So we are not alone, but there is nothing to celebrate about it. Now the question here is, ke what's a debt-stressed country? Debt-stressed country is that the budget budget ka 20-25% revenue debt repayments में जा रहा हूँ अगर आप हमारा budget आज देखिए तो जो हमारा inflow आता है वो सारे का सारा debt repayment में जा रहा है बाकी हम मुल को कर्ज पे चला रहे हैं So we got to understand that So we are a very seriously debt stressed country and that's a fault line at the macro level हमारी 74% to GDP is worth cuts, which means 38% is worth private sector ka domestic cuts. The Kriban 50% is worth our Baharka cuts, which is dollars very pay on it. Kuch Hamara bilateral hai, Kuch state owned enterprises ka. Tisri Hamari macroeconomic fault line sahina basically is our continuous, you know, pressure on fiscal deficit. Hum up the resources se kahi zyada rare re hai. Our fiscal deficit out of control. Hai. Not many people would understand, perhaps, that fiscal deficit ka inflation is not look We have to say that we have to say inflation control. We have to say that middleman is not going to be able to say that the market is not going Holding is not going The biggest culprit of inflation is your fiscal budget deficit. जब आपके बजट का खिसारा होता है आप कहां से पूरा करेंगे देखें ना अगर आप مزید قرض نہیں لے سکتے تو اپ کرنسی چھاپیں گے جب اپ کرنسی چھاپیں گے جو کہ بے تحاشا پچھلے 3 سال میں ہم نے نوٹ پرنٹ کیے ہیں جب اپ نوٹ پرنٹ کریں گے تو تو منی سرکولیشن اوپر چلی جائے گی اور انفلیشنری پریشرز ول ناٹ گو ڈاؤن سو دیز ار دا 3 میکرو اکنامک فالٹ لائنز وچ پاکستان از کنٹینیوسلی اسٹرگلنگ وتھ I will say two more points now because Ajkal macroeconomic ki bahut baat hoti hai. Pakistan is likely to stay in an IMF program for another three years or so. So IMF kya karta hai? Ek ye hume fault line samajhne ki baat hai. I think aap sab ko bhi <coughs> and hum logo ko bhi jab aap baat karte hai to hume IMF program ko please celebrate nahi karna chahiye. We are celebrating a fund program that our biggest achievement was that we have negotiated the program with IMF. That's not a dignified nation to go forward. What you need to have is that you need to have a medium-term growth plan negotiated with the IMF. I am negotiating the IMF in 16 countries. I am negotiating the IMF. There are countries who come up with their homegrown reform program. That is my agenda. Where do we convert? Rather than saying that we are dying, we can't pay our bills, please come and bail us out. There are two different ways of dealing with IMF. 
या तो आप ट्रांजैक्शनल डीलिंग कर लें कि हमें बेल आउट कर दीजिए या आप एक पार्टनरशिप की डीलिंग कर लें अब देखिए तेईस प्रोग्राम हमने किए जिनमें से हमने एक पूरा किया होता क्या है कि आईएमएफ आपको लाइफलाइन देता है यू बाय सम टाइम एट एन एवरेज 12 से 18 माह में हम वो प्रोग्राम से निकल जाते हैं क्योंकि हमारे पास थोड़े से पैसे आ जाते हैं हम चल के शॉपिंग शुरू कर देते हैं देन वी स्टार्ट बेसिकली बिल्डिंग ब्रिजेस एंड रोड्स एंड बिल्डिंग्स एंड फीता काटना एंड डोलिंग आउट मनी टू एम पी इसके बाद क्या होता है उसके डेढ़ साल के बाद फिर से आप बेल आउट पर आ जाते हैं सो देर इज नो इसके अंदर कोई ऐसे बड़े एनालिसिस की बात नहीं है नाउ सो दैट इज द सेकेंड फॉल्ट लाइन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर माइंड सेट आफ्टर मैक्रो नाउ वट आर द इफ पाकिस्तानी पॉलिसी मेकर आपका नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन पॉलिसी मेकर का था इफ यू हैव टू मेक एनी पॉलिसी यू नो इट कुड बी फॉरन पॉलिसी इट कुड बी इंडस्ट्रियल पॉलिसी इट कुड बी डिवोल्यूशन पॉलिसी इट कुड बी रीजनल पॉलिसी इट कुड बी सी पैक so i would say as a pakistani who has seen the economy aapke char jo hain benchmarks these boxes should be ticked first of any policy <clears throat> agar aapke is waqt jo maine youth ki baat ki hai if the policy is not helping create jobs and opportunities for the youth i think that policy should not be a priority number 1 jo hamari policy hai number 2 All investment is not good. Please keep in mind for each country. अगर एक investor यहाँ आ रहा है shampoo बेच रहा है आपसे पैसे कमा के dollars में convert करके बाहर भेज रहा है ना वो job create कर रहा है ना value add कर रहा है ना technology transfer कर रहा है that investment is not good. So please look at investment जो आपके लिए दो चीजें करे कम अज कम job create करे और dollars inflow लाए we are somehow hostage to the word foreign direct investment mujhe samajh nahi aati ya to hamara bhi complex hai jab aapke apne local log invest nahi kar rahe hain to how do you expect foreigners to bring in large sums of money in any economy to ji jo large sums of foreign direct investment jab mai mahadeer mohammed ke sath dekhe hamari baat i'll be very honest mera jo tajruba hai when i was the senior person in the world bank the people will take me far seriously will listen to you when i was sitting in the cabinet then i was one of them nobody listens to you agar main main jo baat kar raha hu prime minister se wahi baat main aajkal to khair arabs bhi hain main saudi arabia se kehla do it becomes very important agar wahi baat aap karte ho so what we need to understand is ke agar investment foreign direct investment aati hai aur dollars mein earn karti hai we can repay that investment अगर वो रुपए में अर्न करती है तो इन द करंट सिचुएशन वी कैन नॉट थर्ड इज हमारी प्रोडक्टिविटी और प्रोडक्शन बहुत कम है फॉल्ट लाइन में हम 250 मिलियन लोगों को फीड नहीं कर सकते कपड़े नहीं दे सकते चीजें नहीं दे सकते वी नीड टू इन्वेस्ट इन इंक्रीजिंग प्रोडक्शन एंड प्रोडक्टिविटी उसके लिए हमें टेक्नोलॉजी चाहिए ताकि हम इंप्रूव कर सके ना मसल हम कॉटन के धागा तो बनाते हैं सूट नहीं बनाते यू नो सो वी नीड टू गो ऑन दैट साइड तो चाइना के साथ खास तौर पे वी नीड टू नाउ वर्क ऑन प्रोजेक्ट्स विद टेक्नोलॉजी इज कमिंग हियर टू इंप्रूव आवर प्रोडक्शन एंड प्रोडक्टिविटी देन हमारी फाइनल फॉल्ट लाइन बहुत सारी हैं हमारी एक बहुत बड़ी फॉल्ट लाइन ये है कि हम प्राइवेट सेक्टर को और ये प्लीज आप लोग केयरफुली सुनिए हम प्राइवेट सेक्टर को श्रिंक कर रहे countries have grown by functioning markets countries do not grow on g to g transactions it's a stronger statement i make but i can give you zillions of evidence ke g to g transactions infrastructure tak theek hai kuch public good tak theek hai lekin markets jo hai they take the priority role abhi main usain daud saab ke sath 3 4 din pehle baitha hua tha unhone mere se bada seedha sawal kiya उन्होंने कहा जी डू यू रियली थिंक के 25 परसेंट के ऊपर कर्ज लेके मैं अपने प्रोजेक्ट्स को एक्सपैंड कर सकता हूं नाउ वी गॉट टू अंडरस्टैंड द सॉल्यूशंस कि हम मार्केट को श्रिंक कर रहे हैं 70 फीसद बैंकों का कर्ज स्टेट ले रही है 70 परसेंट ऑफ बैंक एसेट्स आर गोइंग टू स्टेट जो मैंने पहले आपसे बात बात की थी हमारा डोमेस्टिक डेट क्योंकि हमारा डेफिसिट है वी कंटिन्यू extracting money from the banking system 
सो प्राइवेट सेक्टर को तो पैसा ही नहीं जा रहा है तो जब प्राइवेट सेक्टर को पैसा ही नहीं जा रहा है तो मार्केट्स कैसे एक्सपेंड करें वी आर फार टू मच स्टेट सेंट्रिक एवरीवेयर कि स्टेट आपके लिए नौकरी लाएगी स्टेट आपके लिए इन्वेस्टमेंट लाएगी स्टेट आपके लिए सर्विस डिलीवरी करेगी आई थिंक इट्स द टाइम अगर आपको पी हमारा तकरीबन जीरो हो चुका है जो पब्लिक सेक्टर डेवलपमेंट हो द इन्वेस्टमेंट मेड बाय सी और पी एस डी पी इज मैंट एंड ये मैं इस पर आई गिव द क्लोजिंग एंड देन आई थिंक विलेवन सेशन राइट सो क्लोजिंग ये है कि इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कैन ओनली डिलीवर ऑन दिस फोर पैरामीटर्स इफ इट कैन अट्रैक्ट प्राइवेट कैपिटल अगर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर आप बना लेते हैं और प्राइवेट कैपिटल अट्रैक्ट नहीं होता है या पी एस डी पी की इन्वेस्टमेंट कर देते हैं प्राइवेट कैपिटल अट्रैक्ट नहीं होता है दैट्स ए रिग्रेसिव इन्वेस्टमेंट The question we need to ask in the regional sense is that by building port and power plants and roads, are we attracting private capital from within and from the region or not? अगर आप private capital नहीं ला रहे हैं, it's a dangerously alarming situation क्योंकि वो infrastructure alone will actually become a regressive policy intervention. Forty percent of economic zones globally fail. For this particular reason, क्योंकि वो infrastructure को बना देते हैं because आपने फीता काटना होता है तस्वीर खिंचानी होती है you want to look good, लेकिन at the end of the day it does not attract capital. So I will stop with the first sentence just to set the stage: our macroeconomic fault lines, our governance fault lines, and our whole public policy response की fault lines. Uh, that's how I see our economic security uh, should be debated.